Calvin's joined the show, you know, fan fra- favorite, obviously, on the podcast as well. How are we doing? How are we, how are we feeling? Uh, feeling good, you know, I, I made it here. I said I would be here like an hour ago. No, no, no there was no time. I said eight, I no, said, it, it I said eight between time. eight and ten. Mm-hmm. It's 9.03. There's literally You're in no the window. Breaks. If you would have showed up earlier, it would have just been. It would have been actually more so chaos. So this is actually okay. perfect for us. All right. Well, it worked out. Um, yeah, I just completely forgot. I was just out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got some, got some little bit of extra practice in out at New London and then nice. some putts. And then I was trying to figure out dinner when you texted me. And I was like, okay. All right. Fair enough. Very nice. Um, first time in Lynchburg. Yep. First time playing the courses. Yep. There's been some chatter always when we play new courses. You know, the player group on Facebook always, you know, people complaining about something. What are your thoughts? Do you think that this is going to be a great world's test coming up? Yeah, I mean, I think you have two very different and very challenging courses. So I think that's, you know, kind of what you're always looking for in a world championship. I think you have New London, which kind of challenges some different hyzer flip and technical lines in the woods and then you get out to ivy hill and it's definitely more open and and, you know there's a lot of out of bounds so you'd still have to like place your disc but there's a lot more airspace um, to play with but uh really tight greens out there so um i think it'll be pretty exciting i think it's you really do have to throw well at this tournament in order to score well um, which i don't know if it's always the case so yeah now one of our top videos that we've ever done, Calvin was actually in it. It was worst shot triples at Northwood Black. Fan favorite. People loved it. Now, Ezra and Aaron wanted to do that again this year at New London. So we basically traded out Calvin for Aaron. Now, I love Aaron. Calvin's better than Aaron. We shot like eight under. So that kind of tells me, though, I think them taking out the OB on some of these holes was a mistake, personally. I know you haven't played it with the OB. Yeah. Do you think New London is difficult enough right now? Or would you, if I told you, hey, hole one, two, and three normally are a lot harder. Hole 13? 12. Hole 12, normally a lot harder. If I told you those things, would you say, like, oh, I'm all for it? Or do you think... The level of difficulty, you like it the way it is. You like what the changes they did. Um, hole 18, they did make harder, too. Hole 18 is a lot harder. They normally don't have OB on both sides, so they did make that hole harder. But that hole was hard to kind of begin with anyways. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's hard to say without playing, playing it and really knowing where those OB lines were yeah. before. Um, so it's hard to really make a judgment. Right now, I mean, I do think some of the more scorable holes are right there at the beginning of the course out, yeah. out at New London. Like, you know, one – one free score well two's hard still and it's just it's just long yeah um but yeah then you got got three and four right so I, I think you know some of the more scoreable holes are early i don't know what they would have had on 12 just ob on the left so it's, o- it's ob right there on the left yeah. so a lot of, you know i played with ezra and aaron and they both threw like hyzers through the gap on the right yeah you would never throw hyzer because you're so terrified of it going left and ob because then you also like can also not have a putt over there so the shot yeah. normally is always like a flex backhand through that gap which i think is a harder shot and that also brings the ob in on the right because if you flex something too much then it clips those trees on the right and drops an ob so it just makes i to me it's just i don't think it necessarily makes the holes harder for like good shots but we yeah. all know when you have ob on a hole yeah it's in your head and you're like i can't miss there so yeah. you end up missing more to the open side and yeah. so that's that's my that's my whole thing about it yeah yeah i mean it definitely sounds like it those holes are going to play a little easier but i i mean you're still gonna have to they're throw. still tough There's, yeah you still gotta throw good shots and um you know i i think regardless of those changes i mean there's just a lot of gaps to hit out there so i yeah. think someone who's playing well out there regardless of how those hold like if they were going to throw if they throw the other holes well they're probably going to play this with those yeah. ones well as well. uh the gaps are fair though too i i do i do enjoy myself some fair gaps uh of where it's just that you know if you throw a good shot it's kind of like sometimes you throw a shot and you don't have to look at it like you can just turn away because you know exactly what's going to happen sometimes yeah. we play courses where it's like you kind of have to watch the entire flight yeah because you're like ah i hope it misses that one tree like new london there's very few holes if any where it's like 
you 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 throw if you throw a good shot out of your hand, you know it's gonna be solid. So I like that about it. Um, all right, going into this tournament, let's talk about it a little bit. Do you start feeling as each major comes up? Do you start feeling more and more and more pressure coming up? Of is this the one that I'm gonna win? Is this the one I'm gonna win? Because it'd be crazy for anyone to bet. Like if there was a bet out there, over under .5. Calvin winning a major. I think everyone's taking the over, right? So, well, I'm sure you have some haters. I'm sure there's I'm sure, I'm sure there's, there's some of them. I'm right sure now, there's yeah. four or five people out there that are hoping that you never win, but I would I would assume most people with your skill level, your talent, you're going to finally get one. So like, does it start is it start piling up leading into tournaments like this? Do you feel that or are you just like, hey, if I go out there and I play my game, I'm going to win. If I go out there and I don't play well, I'm going to lose. And it's it just it is what it is. Yeah, I guess I don't I don't tend to look at big picture too much. Okay. Um, you know, all I can really control when I'm coming into this tournament is how I prep for it and, you know, how everything goes at the tournament. I'm I'm pretty much just very just focused on every tournament I play individually. So I can't say there's any more pressure. I mean, gotcha. it's a major, so, like, you know, there's obviously a little more there. You know, you know it's a bigger tournament. I mean, this we're playing a five-round tournament, which is, I mean, the only five-round tournament we play all year. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't say just, like, as time goes on, there's more. Yeah, that's tough, that's tough to do, though. Like, a lot of people, like, you're, I mean, obviously, we're all going to be nervous. We're always, all going to have those butterflies on hole one. It, it happens at every tournament. You're going to feel a little nervous, right? I think as the tournament goes on, obviously, the pressure definitely builds. But what it sounds like you're saying is, like, you're not coming into this tournament being like, this is the most important tournament of my entire life. You almost kind of go into every tournament that way. So it's not like this new yeah. new feeling of, like, this one is even bigger because every tournament you're saying, tomorrow, one day, I'm going out there, I'm trying to play as best as I can tomorrow, and then after that, I'll see where I'm at and we'll go from there. I think that's tough for a lot of people to just, like, make it that simple. I think a lot of people are worrying about, oh, uh, what are people going to say if I don't win this thing? It's like, bro, you haven't even played the first round yeah. yet. Now, across the past several seasons, you've been one of, if not the most consistent players. Is that something where when you see five rounds ahead of you that you get excited about of like, oh, you know, you got to be consistent across multiple rounds? Or is it a similar thing where you're just like, I'm attacking the next round and then the round after that, and I'll, I'll cross that bridge when it gets there? Yeah, I mean, I think every round, you know, you're just out there trying to attack it the best you can. And, you know, you're not really focused too much on your score until it's really coming down the final stretch. So if you do have a chance and you are in contention. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you do have to be consistent to, to some degree to win Worlds. Um, but even beyond consistent, like, you have to play really well for five rounds. Like, it's not just, like, being consistent. Like, you can shoot 1050 golf and you can lose this tournament. So... Yeah, we, yo, Champions Cup this year, you could have like an off round and still win. Do you yeah. think that's the case at this one? Do you think you can have an off round and still win if you play well the, the other four? Or do you think there is going to be someone that just doesn't have an off round? I guess it depends on what you define as an off round. Like, I, I don't think you can like completely just like blow up, blow up on a round. But like, I don't think you have to shoot. I think you could have one round where you shoot like mediocre. Okay. Um, like six it, shots off the le off the leaders kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I think I think you, I think you can still battle back. I think there's there's definitely strokes to be gained out on out at New London, and then like you know there's plenty of OB at Ivy Hill to where, you know, you can gain strokes as well. Yeah, I mean we just talked to Isaac. It sounds like Isaac's gonna be playing hole 16 for par, all three days. So like right there, it's like let's just let's just assume Isaac's in the lead down the stretch at Ivy, right? Hole 16, he's playing for par. If you're playing for birdie, that's one stroke right there. Yep. Hole 17. Who knows what'll happen? Yeah. I mean, that could that can be easily a two-stroke swing, right? And then hole 18, I don't love hole 18. It's like not one of my favorite hole finishing holes of all time. Um, but there is a little bit of like score separation, right? Because like yeah. you, if you get a little bit squirrely on your tee shot, your second shot can be a little dicey, and then you're well, you landing. you can have really tough footing, footing. On when you're going to that golf tee. And you, and, you, and you could go, like, low off your second shot, and now you have, like, a, a much harder, a much yeah. longer, harder. So, so 18 could be wild, wild. So, like, I'm with you. I think, I mean, I think if you're three back, 
three back going into 16, oh, I think you're still right I think in you're it. in the mix. Yeah. Which yeah. is nice because some courses we play, it's like if you're three back going into 16, like you need the other person to like blow up. Yeah. You know, and I like it. Uh, Edwin threw up a stat too for you. He said, um, your average finish at majors, fifth in 2022, seven and a half at 2023, and third this year so far. So pretty consistent over the last three years. Uh, and obviously this season you, you're having the best average finish you've had so far uh, with majors. And, you know, obviously that's just two majors. we got two more coming up. Um, but uh, what, what changes let's, – let's play this game. What changes if Calvin all of a sudden becomes world champion? I mean, are we going to start seeing you, like, roll up in a fancy car? Like, are you going to get a perm? Like, are we going to start seeing, like, fancy jewelry? Like what's what's changing here? What's happening? I don't think anything's changing. Just next but I've day. I've never won a world title. <laughs> so you don't know. Hard to say. Could just start doing crazy stuff. Yeah. Who knows? I'm yeah. gonna text him, be like, "Hey, man, you want to come on the podcast?" And it's just gonna direct me to his like manager that's like <laughs> handling all his phone calls now. It's like, sorry, you have to go through me now. Um, yeah, no, it, it, it seems like you would definitely be one of those people where. You're, like it wouldn't like have a huge impact. I mean, I think you would obviously appreciate it, but it doesn't seem like it's, you're someone that would like all of a sudden, like your life would just change and you'd yeah. start acting differently, dressing differently. Yeah. I don't think so, but you never know. You never know. You never, know. you never know until it happens. That yeah. would be electric to see what happens. Um, so yeah. How, I mean, how are you feeling? How, how you've got a couple of practice rounds now. How, how are you feeling game wise going in? You were in skins too. Yep. Yep. I which, played skins out at Ivy Hill, which is always kind of, I don't know. I think some people try to get like, uh, Ooh, he didn't really play well at skins or Ooh, he played well at skins. Like uh, skins. I don't think is a great. No. I mean, you always kind of throw a little you, different shots yeah. and then also what you end up with at the end isn't necessarily indicative of how, how well you actually play. played. Yeah. Uh, it's really just, a, if you, if you shoot the best on the right hole at the right time, you exactly. end up with the most money. <laughs> Scott Stokely. Yeah, the shot. Biggest shot of, of, of all time. Um, so, yeah, so game's feeling good, though. I mean, you've been playing pretty solid the, the last last little yeah. bit here. Yeah, everything's feeling pretty good. Um, feel pretty good about the courses. I mean, it's, I mean, everything's out there right in front of you. You just have to go out it. there and execute yeah. it. Yeah. Dude, it's going to be fun. I think, I think everyone's going to be really excited. I know this one feels, to me, this one feels like it's going to be crazy. I hope so. Like, I have a feeling of where we're not just going to see, like, people slowly get farther and farther away from everyone. I feel like there's going – because we're going from New London to Ivy, I feel like there's going to be this – and then all of a sudden this, and, like, a little back and forth, and obviously going to the final round, there will be some separation. It'll be fun to see kind of how everyone goes there. Um, do we see another Tristan Tanner this year? That's the other Leading question. Leading from the B pool? Yeah. Because Ivy Hills, I think, is more scorable than New London. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. As long is as it's not chance? windy. As long as, um, I think there's always a chance, you know. I mean, you're talking, you're talking about two rounds. So, basically, someone in B-Pool just has to have two hot rounds. And well, no, I, I was just saying, well, two rounds is crazy. I was just saying one round. No, you're just saying just I'm Ivy. just saying, like, after. Ivy, there's a solid chance. Uh, after round one, can we see a leader from B-Pool? Yeah. Since it's Ivy versus New London. Two rounds would be wild. It could happen, but it would be wild. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if there's someone in B pool that's like in the this mix pops after, off. after. Well, yeah, because I was thinking too, like I barely made it into the A pool this year, and so that made me like interested, like what the last couple years has looked like, the cutoff, and the cutoff has gone up drastically mm. the last couple years of where it's like it's getting deeper. Yeah, if you were just like over a thousand rated, like you were in the A pool. Yeah, and now the cutoff was. 10-10, I think. I would say there's a guy here who I think is one of our employees. I'm pretty sure he's 1,000 rated or right at it, um, and he's in the B pool. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy stuff. You got anything coming out this week? Anything for the people? You doing any meet and greets? You doing anything like that? or? Um, I guess the only thing I can think of is I'll be over – after the round at Ivy, I'll be over at the uh, end of a booth signing mm -hmm. discs. Thank you. Um, I think I, they have some rhinos over there or something. And you are second feature card? I believe so tomorrow, yeah. Second feature. Okay, so Second finishing. Feature. Gosh, what do you think the pace of play is going to be out there with, the, with our slow walkers? It slow might be walkers. bad. It might be bad with those hills and our slow walkers. New London tomorrow? Oh, New London tomorrow. New London it might not be bad. Yeah, Rounds can get long out there. 
Ivy's going to be long. I mean, I walked it for skins, and it wasn't as bad of a walk as I thought it was going to be after I drove it on a cart. So That's good. I just know there's going to be some people for sure being like, hey, do you guys all care if we take 30 seconds to catch our breath after walking up this hill? <laughs> I'm going to be like, no. <laughs> Throw, brother. <laughs> yeah. We did play, uh, we did a little foundation versus the nation thing this today, which is like we just play with a bunch of our fans and it's awesome. And we had a decent amount of kids out there. Mm -hmm. They were some of the fastest players. They were, they were like, so like, the future, future, future's fast. Future is bright. Gannon Jones. Love it. Yeah, I'm just hoping people aren't watching him play <laughs> <laughs> and thinking that's the, that's the way to go. Uh, you got anything else for the people, Calvin? I don't. I know you're hungry, probably. So I don't want to keep you too long. No, I don't have anything. Anything really going on? Um, Calvin just, shirt. I, it's not happening this week. I'm. I'm sorry. I thought it was my. I thought I might have been busted yeah. out. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I thought you might bust out the Calvin. I mean, the chat's just gonna go crazy about the Calvin shirt. The people yeah. want to see the Calvin, Calvin shirt. shirt. The people yeah. want to see the Calvin shirt. Yeah. So. Still haven't. Still haven't made that happen. But um, you know, never know. One if day. you need someone to make it happen, I know a guy. Okay. Well, you I'll just let, let you me know. know. Maybe if I win a world title. Okay. okay. Maybe All that's right. what will change. Look at that. Chaser 90 K okay. shirt. He wants a shirt. <laughs> Love it. All right, Calvin. Appreciate it. Thanks yeah, for stopping by, brother. It. Good luck this week.